Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelleg for GrinderSchool.com. Uh, here today with a, another video in this series. Um, we're going to look at playing from the cutoff today versus a raise. Uh, so I've filtered for uh, hands where we're in the cutoff. We have an opportunity to 3-bet, or we're just facing a 2-bet. Um, and where we uh, v-pipped as well. So obviously we don't just see the hands where we folded, we just see the hands that we, uh, we choose to play. So here's the first one then, um, we see a raise from a similar size stack to us, maybe he's at 26 bigs and we have 25. Um, I think calling is okay here, and I think uh, shoving is okay as well. Uh, I think if we three bet, we're kind of committed to the, to the pot. I mean, if this guy is only going to 4-bet a pretty tight range, then we can get away with 3-bet folding. Um, and you might think, okay, so why are we turning our hands as, uh, with such great equity as King-Queen suited into, into a bluff? Um, we're not really turning it into a bluff. We are taking the initiative in, in the hand. And this guy could definitely flat with some hands that we are well ahead of. Um, and also, you know, if we both miss, then we win the pot. So... I think three betting would be fine. Now uh, we call. Um, we have two overs and a gut shot, um, but with no backdoor flush draw, I think we could bet this. I'm a bit concerned about the button though as well. Um, when it checks through, I'm trying to think if that six really helps us in any way. It doesn't really. Um, we could probably now value bet pocket tens, but then we're going to three bet those probably. Um, so. We don't actually have too many 6x, so we're probably not really repping that much, so we should probably just continue to check. When it gets to this river, I think we're going to lose to a lot of ace highs. So I think putting in a fairly substantial bet here um, would be would be quite good. Um, we're obviously going to be bluffing too much if we, we bet here with, with king, queen of hearts. Um, but I think it's going to get through enough of the time. So we end up checking and yeah, they both have aces and they both uh, would have folded. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about this guy. Maybe he's, you know, he's, I think it's fine playing out a position against two players to check um, a flush draw. But he doesn't have many better draws than this on this board. So I think he has queen ten, ten eight, stuff like that, eight seven. Um. But yeah, I think I would bet this. Um. Or at some point, maybe on the on the turn. Um. I think you're going to see some strong hands bet from us or from the button a lot of the time, so he can start bluffing with uh, this hand on the on the turn. Okay, so get the next one, another king queen. I refuse to raise, and here, so what do we do? We decide to call. Um, I'm not sure. I'm massively in love with this. I think this is probably a, even a better candidate than before to to three bet fold. Um, I'm not too concerned about. Giving up such a hand with with such great equity in this uh, in this situation, and he's he's going to be forced to uh, to four bet or or fold um, by four betting. He's going to jam, so we can actually leverage his stack size here. So I think three betting would be much better. We do call, um, and he checks this board. Um, so he might have some hands that he wants to check jam. He might have a hand very similar to ours. I think it's very clear that we're not going to get three streets of value from this hand. So I think we should probably start off with a check. And we want to check some ace hands here as well. Uh, he checks again, so now I think we should start betting. Um, I think there's a chance he could, we could still get called back queen jack. Um, I guess he could have kings. That's unlikely now that he has an ace. I think he would bet an ace now on the turn once we check. Um, so yeah. And he goes to check again. I think we have to value bet here. Yeah, and we do. And he has jacks, and we we in a little pot. So I mean, if we'd three bet, he would have four bet uh, jammed. But we relied on winning the like hitting the flop in order to win this hand. Whereas if we three bet, we can uh, sometimes get into fold and sometimes get into fold on the flop. Um, so I think. Taking the initiative and the aggression would be much better. Okay, 9 8 suited. We see a raise and a call. Uh, we're getting really good, a uh, good price here. Multi way, starting to be multi way, and we have a decent suited connector, so I think calling makes sense. Fortunately, now 
Uh, versus the, the squeeze, I would have folded just too much of our stack, but then when this guy jams, very easy fold instead, and we end up kings versus jacks. Um, okay, so here we see a raise. Uh, this sounds just no, never going to be good enough to call. I hope I don't call. I hope we three bet to at least 2.5x his raise. Let's see. We do. Okay, we go to full 3x and he calls. And then he checks to us on this board. Now, we're obviously going to have ace king, ace queen, probably ace jack suited, ace 10 suited that we're three betting if we're three betting a linear range. Um, we're going to have some ace fives and ace fours as well. Uh, we're not going to have fives and fours. Um, yeah, we have a lot of a lot of strong hands on this board, so I think we should probably uh, we need to bet, and we can get away with betting fairly small. Probably bet about ten percent of our stack, so we end up betting twenty eight hundred, like a quarter pot. I think that'd be absolutely fine. It's probably a little bit too big. Um, it's going to get the same job done, betting twenty eight hundred as it is forty two hundred. And if he does have an ace, then you know we it costs us less. Um, the ace on the turn. Big problem here is if we check, we basically white waving a white back. Um, I think most of our strong hands now trips or better. So like ace five, ace four, or then ace ten plus. It's probably going to want to go ahead and and continue to bet here. Um, maybe ace ten, ace jack can check back, and the ace king, ace queen definitely want to bet, and ace five and ace four as well. Um, I guess there's an argument, given that you know we have one and a half x pot, or less than one and a half x pot behind, that we could check this uh, this turn, and then if he fires the river, we can jam over the top. Um, so, yeah, looking at it like that, maybe it's fine to check here. We're not just you know checking and giving up, uh, and he may well check to us on the on the river as well. Um, we also give him a chance to hit a club if he has a club. But now he decides to pile. And I mean, this is why we probably need to check some ASX hands back on this uh, on this turn because our hand does look uh, pretty weak at this point, pretty capped. Um, so yeah, this is the important. This is why it's important to to check some ASX and some boats back on uh, in this spot. So yeah, obvious fold here, and move on to the next turn. So now we have kings. Um, so I'd like to see a three bet here. I think. There is an argument for slow play, where we call here because we've got two stacks behind who could shove. Um, but we are fairly deep, 50 big blinds effective against the opener, so um, I decided 3-bet and go to 3x. I think we could probably make our 3-bet smaller and just go to 3k instead. Um, but those are the reasons for 3-betting there. Uh, here we have 9-8 suited. I think calling or 3-betting both fine. Obviously now we have to fold. Uh, let's just go back and, and see what we think about the pocket eight shove. Um, I mean, he's getting great price just to go ahead and call. The guy's raised from early position off a sub-20 big blind stack. Um, you know, how many hands is he realistically going to open in this spot? Uh, so I'm not sure he has a massive amount of fold equity. And actually, he has more than 20 picks. We got that wrong. Um, yeah, now looking at it, uh, now knowing he has over 30 bigs, then this shove with eights is just horrendous. Um, just too many uh, chips to, to risk. It's just completely unnecessary. Uh, Ace King then. We see eight raise, and we're just happy to three bet and get this in. Uh, I do actually choose to shove here. That's kind of interesting. So six, eight, thirty-five. Um, we have twenty-seven big blinds. I think that if he makes it 2x, that we should probably just 3-bet to get it in. Um, but we have less than 10 times his original open. We have 9 times his, his raise. So I think I think jamming is absolutely acceptable here. And we get folds. And, you know, picking up that pot that is 1,300 chips is uh, definitely worth it, especially without seeing showdown. We see another raise and a call. Um, I think this hand just plays so well that we should just go ahead and call. And now we just have to give up. We have queens, and uh, definitely going to look to three bet. Let's have a look at his stack size. So we have 40 big blinds, and there are a couple of stacks who are short behind us. Um, again, I think the argument could be made just to flat here. 
but we are 40 picks deep, so we decided to, to three bet. This guy cold calls off 30 um, ish big blinds, and this guy calls, and we get this flop. So we did three bet pre flop. Um, we are going to have some ace king, um, king queen. King Jack suited, King Ten suited, maybe. Um, trying to think, any other King X hands? So we, do, I mean, we do have some 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 fairly strong hands here. We also have hands like this, like Aces, Queens, Jacks, that um, a little bit worried about the King. So I think that if we're going to check here, obviously we need to check our King X hands as well. Um, it goes check check again. I do think we can start betting now, and then we can choose on the river whether or not we feel like. Um, betting, betting again. Uh, I do choose to check. And this guy leads now for three k. Um, flush gets there. Got to think about what do we actually beat. And I think actually he could value bet here with a jack. So obviously we beat a jack and we're getting great odds, better than four to one. Um, so it need to be right here, nineteen percent of the time. Now if he never has any bluffs, then it doesn't matter that we're getting great odds we just have to fold um so I, I, yeah i think we're going to see some king kings sometimes we're going to see pocket sixes sometimes pocket jacks maybe um but i also think we're going to see like ace jack um he called cold called a three bet didn't he so pocket fives unlikely um i think a hand like ace king is just going to lead the turn so i think a king x or better on the turn is just going to lead so I think we could see a Jack X here. We could see pocket sixes as well. So I think we have to call. Um, all right. Well, he ended up having pocket jacks. Um, I think he should probably leave the turn um, because we have exactly hands like this, and he just puts us in a spot on the river. Um, so yeah, he didn't really make it difficult for us. Um, yeah, he got some value, but you know we're supposed to call that, and he's supposed to bet. So. It's one of those spots where you just can't really do much about it. But you know, he could have made it much more difficult for us by um, betting, betting small on the turn and then jamming the river. I mean, maybe I fold, but um, you know, I think he's not to know that the six of hearts is going to come off. So if it's a blank, it's like the two of spades, and then he shoves. Then you know, we do block like queen ten, um, but then we don't block all of the hearts that missed. So we end up calling and he wins a nice pot. So I think he's misplayed that. We have king queen off. Um, again, I think we should three bet fold this. So we've got 25 big blinds. Um, we're three betting another gun player. It looks really, really strong. If he then four bets, we can just fold. Uh, but I ignore that and just decide to flat. Now we get to this situation. We're in position with second pair. Um, we have a guide to act behind us. I think we can call one. Um, but this is the concern with this, you know, now is that we're just, we're getting pretty short and our stack to pot ratio now is, is less than one. Uh, when this guy over calls, I'm just done with the hand. I just never think that we're, we're good anymore. Um, this guy bets small, this guy calls. Well, I mean, we're getting great odds, but I just can't see how we're ever going to be ahead here. So I fold. And this guy bets small with jacks. Like, he needs to squeeze jacks there, I think. Preflop. Um, yeah. Okay, next hand. Ace jack suited. We see a full 3x here. Um, we are very, very deep though. 60 plus big blinds. I'd like to see a 3 bet here, I think. Uh, but obviously, the this hand is following uh, the rest of the... I'm following a trend here that we, uh, we end up folding rather than 3-betting. Uh, he bets and we fold. Okay, next one then, pocket eights. Uh, I see a limp, limp. Okay, so this is a great spot to just go ahead and call. We want to play pots against these two players who have limped. So we call. And uh, yeah, I think checking here is fine. And now, unfortunately, we have to give up. I mean, with a lot of these spots, you know, the first person that bets is going to win. So maybe we can bet. Um, but we do have to get through lots of players. It's not. Um, out of the realms of possibility that this guy's got tens and nines, so you know we bet, and he actually calls with a better hand. So I don't expect anyone to have a jack. Like these well, these two could have jacks, I suppose. 
Uh, this guy probably doesn't. He might have a weak Jack X hand, you know, given that it's five ways, he probably should check some Jack X hands here. Um, but yeah, I just don't think playing pocket eights there is, is very good. Here we have King Queen. Here we see a raise. Uh, this guy limps, so we see an isolation raise. I wouldn't, I'm not a big fan of, of, of flatting. I know I've, I, uh, you've seen me flat a couple of times here. Um, but I think th there's a stronger argument to flat here because this guy limped and I want to play pots against him. So we do get to go three ways. This guy's got to be really honest now as well. Um, so he bets and we do have two overcards and a backdoor flush draw, but we have the other guy to act behind us and this guy should be fairly honest. So I, I'm not sure like we're supposed to call here. Um, I mean, now we just need to go for it. Um, because this card is so much better for, for our range than it is for his. We always have all the flushes, all the straights, like Jack-10, we have 6x. Um, we, yeah, we should be betting, yeah, and we do. We bet fairly big here, and he folds, so uh, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with where we played that turn. Um, yeah, if he calls, we have just over pot left. We you know, potentially jam the river, put him in a really tough spot with, with his overpairs. Okay, here we have pocket kings, and we see a 2.5x, very easy here, we just have like nine big blinds, we're just going to go ahead and shove, and he folds, well, um, what price is he getting here? So he's getting better than 2 to 1, I mean, he shouldn't really be folding many hands at all, so that's pretty unfortunate to have a hand as strong as kings, and he, you know, completely soul reads this and folds. Uh, we have sevens. I think heads uh, heads up just against this guy. I'm not massively sure that sevens is a profitable call versus a four x. But given this guy's in there as well, um, and there's some three stacks behind, I think maybe we get you know the implied odds to continue uh, here. Then same as the eights, we're just going to check, and now we have to fold. See how this hand plays out. Um, Okay, so this guy decided to lead on this turn. I think that's pretty bad. I also think his call is pretty bad. Um, he's just not going to hit a set enough of the time against a 4x for it to be profitable. I mean, unless he knows this guy's an absolute donkey and the villain 85 maybe is a is a whale and he can, you know, he wants to play pots against them. I just don't think that's uh, going to turn a profit. Okay, so again, that um, scenario where we get a limp and an ISO and we have a semi-playable hand, so I'm going to continue here. Fortunately, not our flop. This guy bets huge. He bets huge and then bets small on the turn. So, I mean, this kind of just looks like the nuts to me. Uh, he's setting himself up for a river jam. Well, he doesn't. Okay, let's see. <laughs> he's king. Well, um, yeah, I think he's got a value bet. I mean, there's so many ace -X hands in this guy's range that he has to value bet the river, so... I think that's misplayed. He's probably just worried that the guy's got a jack. Let's take the head off again. Okay, so uh, we see a raise uh, from a 40 big blind stack. If you want to go ahead and 3-bet here, we do. And again, we get a cold call um, from a guy with 12 big blinds. So, I mean, this could be the nuts, I guess. He calls. Uh -huh. And then he just rips. I mean, we're never folding, so you know, nice hand. And he has fours. Um, yeah, don't do that. That's really bad. Just fold. <laughs> and the less we say about that, the better. Uh, okay, so you see a raise here. Um, I said earlier on the Jack-10 suited plays pretty well. We want to see a flop with it. Um, I think that's true. I think multi-way, I think it's even better. Um, I think, that again, there's an argument to three-bet this hand, but we can flat as well. And then this guy, okay, he raises. I thought he jammed, um, and we were getting two to one. So we're going to be pretty close to, to calling this off, but now we just have to fold. And we have ace jack suited. Apologies for HUD coming up. Um, okay, so we see a 2.2x, and we have seven big blinds. So we are definitely going to be getting this in. I think it's worth uh, running this in HRC. We haven't done any HRC work yet today. Um, and just uh, see what other hands that we can we can raise here. Um, so let's just let's have a quick think first. He has 26 big blinds. There are one, two, three, four players who can shove on him. So I don't think he's going to be that wide. 
Um, so we're going to probably tighten up his range from what HRC suggests, and then uh, and see what range then we can we can shove over the top. Uh, so these, I mean, these are the interesting spots um, because we don't have any fold equity, so we need to have hand equity. So we we can be confident hands like I don't know tens is going to be good enough to go here, and Ace Jack suited just very very easy easy shops but we might find that there are some other hands in there that we can we can get in so I'm gonna pause it and uh, come back okay so we have this guy opening and this is these are the ranges that HRC suggests to begin with and once again um, sort of a disclaimer is that these are if the game is only ever played as a pre-flop game and we um, I mean we still see flops turns and rivers if we get all in but um, we never get to flat and then play play flops um, so we apparently can shove this range against a 27% opening range. Like I said, though, I'm not sure that this guy is opening that many hands um, with players who can shove on him behind. So if we tighten up this range somewhat, um, so we give him some, some Broadway hands that block a lot of shoves. Um, maybe he could open some ace because it blocks three bet shoves, but he's still priced in to call me, um, so he can't be ridiculously wide. Um, so we'll, we'll go with we'll go with this range and we'll we'll run the calculation again. Um, so before it was like 16%, so we'll just see what it uh, comes out to, to now. So we've only dropped down to 12.8, so we can still shove, not make it easier to see. So ace jack suited obviously still a fine shove. Go with fours plus ace ten offsuit king queen off king jack suited and all of these um, great hands. What could do here is we change the background color to EV. You can see that ace five suited is not really showing that much of a profit. Same with ace seven suited. Um, so if you wanted to get rid of like, these bottom hands, we could just select an edge of let's say 0.1. Um, so I, I now it drops down to 11.9%. Um, but I said earlier on, so like ace jack suited was a plus was going to be an easy shove and tens plus. But you can see. At fours plus ace ten off, ace eight suited, king jack suited, king queen off. They're absolutely fine as well. Now, if you think this guy is 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 even tighter than this, then this is worth considering as well. If you just think that he um, he mainly has a raise call range, so we'll keep we'll keep these hands in, um, so we'll go even tighter. It's obviously going to have an effect on our range. We're now going to go from I think yeah twelve point eight. I think maybe it went down to eleven point nine when we adjusted it and now it's gone all the way down to 9.2 percent um so we're almost getting to that point where, where he said like ace jack suited plus tens plus so we can add sixes plus ace jack off king queen off ace, ace ten suited um so yeah really important to just go ahead and, and do do that work with with hrc um, we shall i mean not that it really matters about results um, we got very lucky and we move on to the next one Okay, next one then, and we see an undergun raise and a call. Um, hmm, this is a this is a really interesting spot. We have twenty one big blinds. I think shoving is going to be pretty good, um, but this is probably the worst pair that you want to do it with from this position because you still got three players left out behind you, and we um, have to go through an under the gun open. Plus, this guy is flooding off twenty ish big blinds, so could have some. Some fairly strong, strong hands in as well. Um, I'm going to run this in HRC and uh, see what it says. But okay, I decided to call. Um, I don't like this at all. I don't think I just don't think we can call at this stack depth. I think we just want to protect this now. Um, if we don't think this hand is strong enough, we might as well just treat it like pocket threes and just fold. Um, so yeah, I think we'll see what happens in the hand. I mean, yeah, we're just going to end up folding loads. And uh, well, quads against. Uh, not flush, nice hand. Um, yeah, so let's. Uh, I mean, that gives us a little bit more information about this guy's flooding range. Well, let's run it in HRC and, uh, and see what happens. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So this guy opens. Um, let's just have a look. And. We see as we get two folds, so let's read this guy calling. Uh, so this is suggesting that he can call with this range. Uh, he actually can call with ace nine suited, which is interesting, so maybe we'll just leave it like this. 
and then we can jam with this range profitably. And you can see that pocket nines is just a very, very clear, a clear shove in this spot. Um, let's have a look at this guy's opening range. I don't think that's too unrealistic. I think maybe he's going to be more likely to open these hands and fold eights, nine off, maybe a stab. Yeah, maybe we can add these hands. Um, yeah, that's not too unrealistic. Um, we might probably have to run the calculation again in a minute, but let's um, let's have a look at this guy's best response. Okay, so he can do that, and then our best response here. Okay, so now, given that his range is that much tighter, nine suddenly becomes a fold, and we can only shove tens plus an ace king. Um, but I mean, that's this guy's now calling with all of these strong hands, and before he wasn't. So let's. Um, I'm going to run the calculation again versus this slightly tighter range, slightly different range that doesn't have ace nine off but has queen ten suited and jack ten suited instead. Um, so you can see that um, it takes a lot longer given that we can now call around three bets. So I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back. Okay, um, so now this guy's range is going to change, just jacks through sevens, and suddenly we can see nines is going to go in here, and we can we can suddenly uh, shove with it again. Um, yeah, so that's pretty pretty profitable. If we select an edge of, of zero, it just gets rid of these hands that we're supposed to shove like 10% of the time. So we can shove this range. Um, if we click down here again, look at the background color and the EV, we can see like king 10 suited, ace jack suited, just not that profitable. So if we just went with really profitable hands, it's going to be nines plus an ace queen. Be very, very confident about shoving those hands. Um, so yeah, I think we made a mistake here. I think we should shove, uh, shove nines. Flatting just seems terrible. Okay, uh, so next one then we have pocket eights, and I think we we should probably three bet. Um, we probably have the best hand, and we can take the pot down now. And even if we don't, we've got the initiative post flop. But the general general uh, feeling on this sort of situation is that we should flat and uh, see what happens. But I just I just think we're going to get lots of flops that we end up not being able to win on because we don't have the initiative and. It's not that likely that we have that many strong hands on this board, like kings, nines. You know, some kings are going to three bet pre, some nines are going to three bet pre, and we just like just don't have many strong hands. So um, yeah, I think we should three bet there, and we could probably bet the flop and, and win that hand. Hopefully, we three bet here. Okay, no, we don't. I think this again. We could three bet this hand. We are um, fifty big blinds deep, effective. Definitely don't want to go ahead and fold here. I know that we only have bottom pair, but we do have a backdoor flush draw as well. So we call a bit, a bit concerned now that this guy's continued, so we probably are done with the hand now. Um, although this turn card makes things interesting. Um, yeah, I think we have to continue. I mean, any five, any diamond is going to be good for us. So uh, we've got nine, 11 outs. So it's like going to give us about 22% equity i mean there's a chance that we hit a hand and, and lose though that's the only concern um plus the other guy is still left to act behind but i think we're supposed to, to call here um i don't think we want to turn this hand into a bluff although it's not terrible um i just think it has enough equity to, to call so we do and we hit a six which is not going to be very useful so um our only play now, well, there's two plays. We can, should just fold. It's probably the best one. Um, but if we had a few more chips behind, we can shove um, because we have full house blockers. Um, but yeah, I just don't think this guy's going to fold. He's just triple barreled. So, I mean, <laughs> he's uh, he's not li likely to be light in that, in that spot. And here we do. We do put a three bed in at last. And he calls out position. Um, so yeah, we should go ahead and see bet. We don't have to see bet very big. He calls. Very good card for our range. I think we actually just need to run this hand. So and that means just going for it. So betting turn and jamming river. Uh, he ends up folding, which is which is great. But if he calls here, um, I mean we just have so many more stronger hands that we can represent, and he's going to have to fold a lot of the time. See so a raise, and we have threes with thirty-ish big blinds. Uh, again, I'm not sure we'd turn a huge amount of profit by, by calling here. Um, we do have two stacks behind us you can shove, so not in love with it. And yeah, we just end up having to, to fold.
Okay, Ace King suited then. Uh, this guy opens, and we just want a three bet and get this in. He has about twenty big, so it's quite a big raise. I mean, I don't think this ever looks like we're folding. I don't know. I think I was ex uh, going through time ex experimenting with this larger three bet sizing, but I think it needs to be. We need to be aware of of how big this guy's stack is. Like if he has eighty k, ninety k as well, or close to a hundred k, then I think the three bet size is much better. But here we just, you know, we want to have some hands that we can three bet fold, and uh, you know, otherwise we just, you know, always got the goods, and he's just never going to jam, um, or not going to jam enough of the time for all of our hands to be profitable calls there. Uh, here this okay. I was going to say this guy opens for four x, uh, but he just goes ahead and shoves, and we obviously we have a very easy uh, call here. I don't think I want to shove and open myself up. Actually, no, we've only got fifteen bigs yet. Yeah, this is an easy shove. I thought we had more more bigs, um, but no, we just have fifteen, and we just want to get this in. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need to to say any more about that. I don't think. Um, okay, so again here, I think we should make it like 2.5x. Like, this is just too big. Um, I think he's just going to fold a lot of the time. And I mean, it's not the end of the world for getting someone to fold. You know, we can pick up a pot of 3k. Um, but really with this kind of hand, I want to induce him to shove like ace-queen, ace-jack, uh, ace-10, and some pairs that we're going to flip with. So that was pretty poor. Hey, this guy raises off a short stack. And we choose to three... Well, hmm... I mean, if he, I mean, it works. But if he now jams, we're getting ridiculous odds here. Uh, he jams for an extra eight k. There's thirteen k in the middle, and it costs us like six and a bit to call. We are going to be getting better than two to one, although we might not have thirty three percent equity against his four bet range. So maybe this, you know, maybe this, this isn't too bad. Um, let's just uh, let's open Poker Cruncher and have a look. Okay, so I'll just clear these hands out of the way. So a lot of people say, okay, we can't three bet and then fold once you're getting two to one. Um, and the reason for that, um, I mean, it comes from lots of uh, all-in situations that you should never really fold when you're getting two to one um, because uh, there aren't many hands or ranges of hands, ranges that you won't have like 33% equity against um, with with most of your opening hands. Um, but the thing is here, like if we think that his range is just like ace queen off plus, ace queen studio plus, and nines plus, our equity is nowhere near the 33% that we need. Um, so this is like the perfect candidate to go ahead and three bet bluff because we have an ace, we have a 10, um, and we don't mind folding when he shoves because his range is so, so strong. So he's raised under the gun. I can't see how his four bet range can be anything wider than than this. I guess maybe eights. We had eights and then ace jack suited as well. We'll see how we're doing. And we still don't have anywhere near the 33% equity. That also means that you can now, you know, you could do it. I mean, let's have a look at the king queen. So king queen approaching it, but still not quite good enough. Um, let's try ace jack off. Ace jack off, not good enough. So all of these, you know, pretty good candidates to go ahead and three bet bluff. This one might be interesting okay yeah i mean it's just just so much better than ace jack suited and flipping with uh, with the pairs um let's just go back to ace queen suited and nines though and we'll see what happens now and we're still getting enough equity to to go ahead and, and get it in here so ace jack ace 10 king queen those sorts of hands are going to be good bluffs here um so don't really you know don't let anyone tell you you can't you can't fold when you're getting two to one because we've just proved that you can because you're not getting the 33 percent equity that you need here we have eights we see a raise and i think calling or three betting both fine here um but yeah we don't have the initiative and we're going to end up folding a lot so that's not great for us um i guess something just to to look at on his this board is that obviously this board is much better for his range than it is for mine um he obviously has ace king, ace queen, kings, queens, aces. Um, we probably have threes, king queen, and that's it. Um, he has king queen as well. So I think he has a lot more stronger hands in his range. Um, we're going to have a lot of pairs here. We're going to have a lot of queen jack, queen ten. We're going to have some some draws and some marginal hands here. So this board, I think, is better. And so he bets. Um, he bets half pot. 
and we're supposed to we're supposed to continue. I mean, if his bet's half, he needs us to fold thirty three percent of the time. So we're supposed to continue with two thirds of our range here, um, in theory, based on his bet sizing. But based on the board texture and the fact that he has range advantage, we have range disadvantage that we don't have to defend with uh, anywhere near that number. So um, that I mean, we are going to be doing that quite a lot. But I think I maybe I just want to see a three bet more often in this spot. And if he ends up full betting, then fair enough. But um, I just don't think that's going to happen um, happen that much. Okay, here we have ace queen, and again, I, I think this would be a good spot to three bet fold. I think you can jam as well. I ended up calling. I think just think we should apply pressure to this guy. So we should three bet to like twenty eight hundred, three k, three point two k, something. You know, maybe three k. Um, that actually could probably go less than that. 2800 um, but we just we've already seen though that if we three bet here we probably have to get it in when we're getting pretty good odds we're getting like 35 percent so um you know if a few more chips then maybe we three bet fold and yeah in this situation i just don't think flooding is going to be good so he bets and we end up folding and i think we're going to fold a ton of the time we just don't have the chips to be able to float and um, sea turns and sea rivers. We, you know, it's soon going to get very, very short. So I think taking the aggressive line is always going to be better. Same here with nines. I think we should three bet, but I know I'm going to call. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he bets. So now we actually hit a flop that we can continue on with second pair. So we call, but now we're just kind of like, okay, well now we're playing a guessing game. Does he have clubs? Does he have diamonds? Does he have nine eight? Well, we block nine eight. We block nine. Uh, we block some clubs. Um, but we don't block his obvious clubs and his obvious diamonds, so we should probably continue. And he checks, and thankfully we can just check and see what he has. And he has kings, and well, yeah, nice hand. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's do we we'll do one more. Ace ten of diamonds. See a th full three x. Um, we have twenty plus big blinds. Um, we can't really three bet fold now because sizing is just going to make it so that we're getting better than two to one and we probably have to continue with ace ten suited um i also don't like flooding too much i think jamming would be quite good here um, but we do call and we end up folding like to a less than fifth size pot bet which is awful um but yeah we just can't we just can't continue so we have to fold uh yeah so i think jamming here would be would be reasonable um, let's run it in HRC and use that as the last talking point for this uh, video. Okay, so um, for some reason we've got 2.2x in here. I'm going to have to run it again because I definitely put in 3x. Yeah, we'll put in 3x and it's come out with 2.2. Um, so that's a shame. We see two folds. Okay, we'll just run it again. Um, I'll pause it and come back. Okay, so we now got this guy opening and we in the cutoff so you can see ace 10 suited is a shove if he's opening this wide um yeah he's opening from middle position one i think we can add all suited aces here i think we could probably add these i'm going to take out some of these ace x hands i mean the more offsuit hands that we take out the less good it is for us because obviously um, the offsuit hands make up three times as many hands as the uh, the suited counterparts. Uh, but let's say that we went with this kind of range first, and then we can uh, run a calculation. Um, but yeah, so if there's fewer ASEX hands than he, you know, there's fewer hands that he has that are worse than ours. Uh, he probably shouldn't be calling off with them. Um, but we just want, you know, we, we want to have some some fold equity in this uh, in this spot. You can still see Ace Ten suited is a profitable shove. Uh, again, let's do select by edge zero. Uh, strange that Queen Jack suited is not a shove, but Queen Ten suited is. Um, and again, if we look at the hand EV, you can see a Queen Ten suited is not particularly great. Same with Ace Jack off. So let's say that we added a 0.1 edge again. Click OK then suddenly our range looks like this, and this looks like a much better situation, shoving sevens, sevens king, ten suited, ace, ten suited, ace, queen, off. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, I think we should, uh, we should have shoved here. 
and we made a mistake. Okay, um, so a few spots then I think I misplayed. I think we should have shoved the nines earlier as a squeeze. We should have shoved the ace ten suited there. Um, and then lots of other discussion about whether we should flat or three bet preflop. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do. It's at Gazellic Poker. Uh, you can send me an email as well, gazellicpoker at gmail.com if you want to talk about private coaching or you want to discuss any of the hands in this video. Uh, you can also leave comments and post in the forum. Um, yeah, so this has been Gazellic for grinderschool.com. Starting off, take care, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.